right, guys, let's get the conversation started. I have here with me Ali uh, and Rashad. Uh, yeah, I'm hyped about this episode. Let's get it. Yes, sir. So uh, <laughs> right, let's go first. So Ali, why don't you introduce yourself, what you do, and then we'll go into Rashad's story and what he does. But try to keep like a little elevator pitch of who you are and what you do for the listeners who don't know, you know who you might be yet. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, well, uh, Eddie, uh, appreciate you for bringing us on for sure. Uh, my name is Ali Samuel, um, local real estate agent here in Seattle. Uh, Ce- and celebrity real estate agent. <laughs> let, I, let appreciate, know, I try bro. to stay modest. <laughs> I try to stay modest. Uh, you know, definitely uh, 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 happy to be on here. Uh, happy to be in this city and represent the city. Uh, you know, I, I have a little bit of a, a fashion influence. Obviously, Eddie, you and I, you, you know, we, we worked together back in the day and, and you know that. Um, but that's really it. You know, it's just 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 me. My man was on the news the other day. He really was. <laughs> Straight though. up, man. Take five. Yo. You know? All right. So that's that's the instant credibility. He was on the TV. Yes, man. He was on TV. <laughs> yes, anyway, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. But Rashad, can you introduce yourself real quick? Yes. Uh, I, my name is uh, Rashad Little. I go by Mr. Little on Instagram and all social media platforms. Um, I'm a fashion influencer, a photographer. I do some marketing as well um, as my day job. And um, uh, what else can I say? Uh, I've been been on the West Coast here for about two and a half years. Um, I love what I'm doing. Very passionate about um, just helping people and inspiring people, motivating people through my platforms. And um, uh, I, I hope to be blessed and continue to do that for years to come. So I say that's me. Love that. Mm-hmm. Love that. So for the listeners, I give you guys a little background information on how I met these guys, because, you know, this podcast, we've had a lot of uh, like creators, filmmakers, photographers come on. But we got, you know, fashion influence, the real estate agent, Mm -hmm. you know, and Rashad, who is just mainly doing fashion right now, but lifestyle content, both you guys. So it's like, how how did this come to be? How do we have these two gentlemen on this podcast? Well, for a little explanation on my side. Ali, I knew him when we used to work together at Nordstrom. Everyone knows on this podcast, I used to work at Nordstrom. I, I met him there. We just kept in touch ever since. That's, it's been like years now. Like It's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Like literally like probably four or five years now. Yeah. Which is kind of crazy. Um, and then Rashad, uh, we, I think we linked up. I think we connected on IG first. Yeah. And then. No, no, no. The yoga event at. Um, uh, 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 Lululemon. Lululemon. Dude, that's Lululemon. where I met you. Dude, that was the hardest workout ever. Oh, no, I, I, I don't totally like forgot about that. that was the hardest workout ever. <laughs> Yo, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's right. It. Our first project was a little bit later, but we connected first. That's right. At, yep. Literally, and, this and random. And I was event. invited there by Ali. So shout out to Ali. He, yeah. he connected me with you. And, yeah. Uh, well, actually, I would say Ali got me there. And from there, man, I was very social and just trying to connect and just. Yeah. And you know what's funny? When we pulled up, too, I didn't even know Ed was going to be, be there. Yeah. yeah. Well, shout out Ed. to my friend Marcellus. Yeah. He used to be out at Lulu and, and he's the homie and he's the one who who kind of plugged me there and that's how I got there. And then I uh, saw Ali roll in the parking lot. I was, I was like, like, what's yes. up, bro? Yep. Yo. Yep. Yep. That is right, that's where that's where we met. And then mm-hmm. we did our first project together, mm-hmm. kind of like lifestyle collab, probably for one of my projects yeah. for this company called Orbit Key. If you guys follow my work, you know that I, I love that brand. Yeah, but yeah, Rashad killed it on that shoot. And that was, we'll get into it, but that was when he was like kind of first starting out yeah. a little bit. You were still on your journey, but I think you were like sub 10K. I think you had like oh, 8,000 or 7,000 yeah. yeah. followers. Yep. And you had like over a hundred now, was which we'll, we'll get, we'll get. so yeah. Uh, so you guys know that we're excited for this one because they, they got a lot of knowledge to drop, a lot of experience, especially for those of you guys who may not know exactly where you fit into this whole digital world. I feel like they have a lot of insight. So I don't know exactly what the title of this podcast is going to be yet. Um, I kind of just wing it and then mm-hmm. we kind of pull out whatever feels best mm-hmm. i did have like two kind of like north stars that we could follow as far as like subjects and the first one was how to cultivate confidence like online and then the next one was a common saying we hear which is like it's already too saturated mm-hmm. right yeah, so, so it's like i mean we one. could build off of those and there's a lot of things we could talk about but yeah. let's go first thing first why don't we go into like a little bit more of your story on in terms of your your niche and your niche is it niche or niche both <laughs> no i like the way it's like vermicelli sounds. vermicelli yeah you know, which yeah, one is yeah, it yeah 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 yeah. Uh, whatever yeah. I'm, I'm like i like niche so yeah. you know what niche um well, rashad why don't you go first yeah y'all go first um so uh about two and a half years ago i got into this thing i made my first post on instagram with the page i have now september 1st 2018 
And from there, I just, uh, I, I kept it going, man. And in my mind, so my, my motivation and influences was guys like Teaching Men's Fashion, Alex Costa, um, Real Men, Real Style, all those guys, Aaron Marino, all those guys on YouTube. I was like, man, I kind of have, I got this passion, this drive inside me too to put out uh, what I do and what I, what I think is fashionable. I wanted to put that out there. And um, then I'm, I'm a black guy too. It's not a saturated market um, on the, I guess on the, big spectrum for black guys. I was like, I want to be one of the um, like voices of the African American African American community from a fashion standpoint. And that was kind of like my, my drive and determination, man. Um, I started out just taking pictures uh, at my, my little sister's elementary school. They had, she had like a little brick wall. Um, I was with my parents at the time and I just took a tripod out there. I started taking pictures. And from there, I booked my first photo shoot. I, I overpaid like hell. It was like $400 for, <laughs> for like, oh, like, oh, like, you, like you paid. I paid him. Yeah, I paid him twice. I paid him like $800 for, um, yeah, for like, uh, so it's funny. The first time I shot with him, it was for an hour and a half, 400 bucks. I took like three outfits. The next time, a lot of y'all know, I took like 10 outfits for that hour and a half. I was <laughs> like, get your money I said, I'm going to make this 400 count. But um, yeah, and then that just kind of snowballed. I start working with more um, photographers, videographers yourself. Um, I start attending street meet, and I just, I just really, mm. I believe that. I, I didn't know anyone in the city, so I believe that I got to get out here and make a name for myself. I gotta, I gotta put a face to the name for people and tell people what I'm doing. And the best way to do that was just to, to go out and to put stuff on my stories and to just project and to show. I, I have the saying, you know, if you show love, you receive love or get love. So. Um, I showed a lot of love and then, you know, it's kind of landed me to where I'm at today. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're big on the community yeah, big, aspect. Bro. Oh yeah, and for I, sure. I know that. I know we all are, but yeah, that's, that's dope, man. I feel like your story, everyone has a story, mm -hmm. you know, but I feel like not everyone crosses over to the point to be able to be on like a podcast or Instagram or whatever to tell their story. Right. Mm -hmm. Everyone has one. Everyone has a story, Yeah. but there's like that gap. There's that jump that people make to actually be a somebody or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. So I feel like you really made that jump to be somebody in the community yeah. and for yourself and your career path. And we'll have a couple of questions that are going to come up that are going to dive a little bit deeper into maybe like the, the mental state on how you're able to, to achieve that. But to give an insight, just so we can get a full coverage of what you guys do, Ali, can you explain to, you know, how you got into like, what was your journey like before? I know personally, but maybe yeah. tell them like a little bit, you know, pre Nordstrom, Nordstrom, and then now you're doing like real estate and kind of like fashion influenced yeah. um, on social media. How did you get into that? So uh, when social media first all uh, started, uh, you know, I was always really big on it. And this goes all the way back to like Asian Avenue and Zanga. Dang. So it's like way old school. So for some, some of the listeners out there that are familiar with uh, Asian Avenue and Zanga, I mean, hey, we go back. Um, but, you know, I've always had a passion for social media, you know, and I think that the beauty of social media is creating this perception that you want people to see mm -hmm. you know uh, on social media you can be anybody that you want to be you can start all over and practically have a new life on social media um and so for me it's it's uh social media was kind of a it started out as a place for me to kind of vent it was like my diary you know and and i would express myself and it was always through music and fashion um with instagram when it first started i did a lot of like fashion grids you know i took my outfits, laid them out, took pictures and put them all in the grid and I posted them up and I said, oh, this looks cool and started following a bunch of fashion influencers. And that kind of always stuck with me. So then getting into real estate later on, I always thought to myself, okay, well, what am I good at? You know, and I said, it was social media. What do I genuinely enjoy? It was social media. At the time it was uh, uh, Snapchat. I had a segment called Ali TV and and everybody would watch it and people would message me and they'll say how entertaining it was. Ali the guru. Yeah, people would love it, you know, and some of the best comments I got were that uh, people would lay in bed with their significant others and literally watch my snaps <laughs> from start to finish. Nice. You know, and I, I thought it was amazing and, and I like doing that. So I felt like I was a natural entertainer. Mm. So I transferred all of that over to Instagram when Instagram came out with stories. And I would say that for my social media platform, I'm very story heavy. You know, people get to know me from my stories. If you look at my profile, you'll see fashion influencer and you'll see real estate. But if you look at my stories, you really get to know me. And, you know, and I, I put you behind the scenes and, you know, show you what a day in the life of Ali the Guru. And it's not all glitz and glamour. And I think that people really enjoy that. So uh, for me, it's just really inspiring people and showing them, you know, if 
if I can do it, they can too. If I can build something for myself, then they can too. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just like everybody else. And you know, that's, that's really just where the core of my social platform comes from. That's, that's awesome, man. I, I, I feel it too. Like, you feel it? Though, yeah, I, I feel it literally like when you have those stories and it, they're like literal mini vlogs in your stories. And that's, it's that's exactly what I try to yeah, give. I try to dope. give that. You know, someone once told me too, they said, hey, you should save those and put them all into a YouTube channel. Yeah, like a compilation. Someone you know? told me to do that. You know, you I never came around to it, but yeah. you know, someone told me to try that out. The storytelling is big on your stuff, which I really like. Yo. And you're just very, you're like more animated, I would say. And like, I like that about you because... A lot of people, you're entertaining, right? You, like you, you always have a stance. You have an opinion. Some people might like it. Some people might not. But at the mo- at the end of the day, like you tell a story. Yeah, you, you have you to. give someone, you give people a reason to get behind something instead of just not doing anything. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Right? You know, and another thing too, I'll say, is, some people will ask, you know, how do you do it? And I'll tell people, my life isn't always, you know, um, exciting. Mm-hmm. But what I do is I take dull moments and I make them exciting. You know, you, you are the storytellers, like what you said, mm-hmm. you know, so when you tell the story, you want to tell it in a way where, you know, people are going to be like, dang, that sounds amazing, you know, or dang, that looks cool. So th- that's what I try to give. I try to give that off. Definitely. I love that. I love that a lot. Um, maybe we just like open up, maybe just like whoever wants to talk on, on this next question. But mm-hmm. I feel like both of you guys on social media, have, have like a, a very good presence on camera like you're confident with your message right whether that's with fashion real estate or both or whatever you guys are doing you're very confident about it and when you post on your stories and i feel like a lot of people who maybe listen to this podcast right now might be like yeah social media is where it's at where it's at but then they just don't have that confidence you know like they can't mm-hmm. whip up their phone and be like yo what's up everyone like check this out check that out or or just like put out their their work into the world have you guys always had that kind of that that confidence or was there like a bridge somewhere in between where you're like you know what like i'm gonna just do it you know no matter what like, what did that look like I'm trying to trying to get that on-camera presence yeah I, I actually tell a quick story when i used to live in hawaii <clears throat> back in the when it, just when i got out of the military i stayed there for about another year year and a half and um i, st- I started my snapchat stories um i start uh, modeling for wilhelmina who i'm with again now and uh, I used to have like Snapchat stories, but a lot of you not. I had like like 20 people watching only. But what I would my secret was I would never look at who was watching. I would mm. never like see who was viewing me. So it just forced me to just be myself. Mm. I kind of do the same thing now. I don't look at who's watching me. I kind of I try not to look at who's liking my pictures. Um, you know, I, I, I see who follow me here and there, but I try not to get caught up in that. I try to just get caught up in this is what I'm doing. This is this is the story I want to tell. This is the person I want to be. And whoever receives it, receives it. But if you, you know, get too caught up in like, um, this person's watching and what do they think? What did that think? Then you start to tailor your your speech and like your dialogue, everything towards that person or this group of people when it's really about you being authentic. Mm-hmm. So that some t- for me, my little recipe has been just don't look at who's watching. Interesting. Just talk about what you want to talk about. And whoever's viewing is whoever's viewing. I like that. So yeah, like stories, so like stories big, and bro. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. That's a yeah, big that's tip. Big. So like story- still, still now I don't, I don't look like I'll look at the number of people. Yeah. It's like, dang, that many. I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to, I have new people. Cut. And it's crazy because I'll, I'll get people to respond to my stories and like relate to what I'm saying or have another question about it. But if I'm, you know, if you know, my mom's watching or, uh, <laughs> you know, my job's watching and just watching, then I can't, I can't really be me. So I don't get caught up in the who's watching. I just say what I want to say. Whoever receives it, whoever receives it. That's cool. So mm-hmm. even when you had twenty people watching, twenty people, even you got I swear, even you got fifty thousand fi- people watching. I'm telling you, I gotta it ain't fifty thousand, but I gotta, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta find. I was just, I swear, I was looking for them yesterday. I actually saved a couple stories um, from like four or five years ago, but I gotta find those old Hawaii like, and I'll post them because like I used to just be like, I used to be me, and I don't know who I was talking to, but I was enjoying life in, in Hawaii. Yeah. And those 20 people, they got the best of me. And I think those same 20 people, however many it was, still watch me to this day. Mm. And now I have more people watching. But that's kind of, like you said, where the confidence came from. It came from that mentality. Just don't care. Just really don't care. Because if you start caring, then you'll start you'll start tailoring that to the people who you think, oh, they don't want to see this or they're going to have a problem. Nah. Just post what you want to post. If you want to stay, stay. If you want to go, go. Rashad, you know, something big that you said, 
um, and, and it was about being genuine, you know, yeah. just just doing 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 what you do, you know, like not focusing on on uh, you know who's watching and, yeah. and just being yourself. Um, I would one hundred percent agree with that because for me, it's it's I'll tell people if you are afraid of being on camera, then you need to figure out something that you are comfortable doing, you know. So a lot of people, their biggest fear is looking stupid or you know saying something wrong or, or messing up in front mm -hmm. of camera you know and then and then they get embarrassed well the thing is if you're afraid of looking bad or saying something wrong then maybe you're not saying the right thing maybe mm -hmm. you're not saying something that you're comfortable with mm -hmm. you know say something that you truly believe in say something authentic say something organic something genuine and then it'll come out smooth you know and you'll look good doing That's it so true you know, and, and for me, it's like I always tell people, OK, well, if you're afraid to be on camera, then talk about something that you already know. Right. And then it, it'll look good. One of the things I like that Ali does is he'll actually keep his bloopers and stuff like in his oh, stories. And like it. he I'll posts post it. it or like I'll he'll just keep it. flowing. That's me, true. That's me, man, I'll be like, I'll post I'll be like it. dang, I do that again. All right. Dang. I got, yeah, I'll, I'll same, have something same, same. authentic to say, but I'm like, that was, that was trash. Let me do that one more time. <laughs> but I, I get what you're saying, Guru. But. Some people can flow with it the way Ali does it. With me, it's a little bit more tailored like, and a little bit more, um, I guess, cleaned up. Yeah. But, but there's no I still, right I way. still yeah. get that message out there. Ali's yeah. just like, I'm going to cut this camera on one take Drake. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, all right, we're good to go. But that's what makes it so fun to watch, <laughs> yeah, though. Because, yeah. like, sometimes you just, like, you just roll with the punches. You but know? You, you know what the crazy thing about it, though, is is it just not only is it fun to watch, but it's fun to make. Yeah, you know that's the that's yeah. the biggest that's most the important best thing. part. Yeah. It's, it's fun to make. You yeah. know, as long as you keep it original, it's the first shot. Who cares if you messed up? Yeah, you know, you might think it's funny. Someone else is gonna think it's hilarious. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and it works, dude. That was some fire. Just, just <laughs> all right, Mike's <laughs> podcast. All right, we're done now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Episode ends here. Enough enough value to drop. Yeah. For now, um, no, but seriously, that was that was really good. I love I love both what you guys said. Being genuine, mm -hmm. and then you know, don't be looking at too much of who's who's watching mm -hmm. and stuff. Just stay in your lane and do your thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think I subconsciously do do that too, which is like I don't I don't really look at people who watch my stories and like you said, I I just I talk about what I want to talk about mm -hmm. and Facts. I feel comfortable doing it. And Facts. I think that's where. I think at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. That con that confidence you feel on camera yeah. will just come from being comfortable. Like people know, people know when you're not about it. Like exactly. people know when you're trying to be someone you're not. Yep. You know, and then people also know when you're trying to embody something and be something that you really are. Right. And it's I guess you call it passion, but that that word gets kind of lost sometimes in the sauce. But you know, literally, like when you have that fire in your eyes, people know it. People can feel it. And that's what I think that's what people get behind. And that's Facts. kind of where the I'd, confidence comes and, from. And to piggyback on that, too, you take someone like The Weeknd, where early mm -hmm. in his career, he never did interviews. You never seen him. He just did a bunch of music, visuals. Now he's like doing more videos and yeah. he's been mm -hmm. acting in movies and stuff. Right. But it took it probably took him getting to a certain point in his craft where he felt respected enough. to Be like, OK, now I'm ready to get on camera. So if you're someone out there and you're like, OK, I'm not ready to speak like, you know, Rashad and Ali, but. I take damn good pictures or, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, um, I love anime, whatever the case, just put your, just put that passion and stuff out there until you get ready to give your personality, let, let your craft or whatever you do speak for you until you're ready to speak for yourself. Cause everyone's mm -hmm. not really willing to do that. Like off tops, my, 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 you know, my sister's more of an introvert. She lets her art speak for her. But one day, you know, if she, if she gets to that point, she, she'll be able to speak for herself, but her, her art gives her the confidence to be like, you know what? I'm me. I'm Shay. This is what I want to talk about. You know, so sometimes it, it takes a little bit more time for other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's facts. Yeah, because a lot of people do say that. Yeah, to, to yeah, me yeah. too. They'll be like, man, like I I want to do YouTube this year, but like I, I don't talk in front of the camera. I can't. And I'm like, if you don't talk in front of the camera, you don't have to. Yeah. I mean, dude, think about it. There's like corner of the YouTube universe where it's called ASMR. Like, yeah, yeah. they don't. They just don't even, they don't show their face. They don't talk to the camera. Yeah. They just do stuff. They do yeah. what they're good at. Uh, there's so many things where you don't have to show your face. Like cooking channels. A lot of cooking channels on YouTube that you don't have to do tutorials. You like don't even Network. know what their face looks like. Nope. Yeah, yep. they just yep. have right. ASMR, just cutting right. stuff, just, making right. stuff, yep. like doing what they love. So yeah, I think if you if that's one of your biggest fears, being on camera and talking, yeah. then like I you think, said, make your sh work show for it. You don't I have think to get the biggest the example of that too is someone who just passed away, MF Doom. No one knows what that man looks like. Like, I don't know, if, I don't know if it's probably people out there who, who've heard of him, but, um, you know, famous rapper, he always wore a mask. To this day, people don't know what he looks like, but his music is so respected. 
you know so it's just uh some people are just not comfortable putting their identity that's right, yeah. that that's perfectly fine mm-hmm. but still put your gift and your passion out there because that's how you really touch people mm-hmm. you know i agree mm-hmm. definitely definitely so how do you guys um as you guys started in this journey um honestly you guys have been doing what you're doing for a while now you know i mean you guys have always been dressed and fly i mean i, I always been dressed <laughs> and fly since as long as i've known <laughs> this guy so um how how did you guys still break past the noise though because i feel like a lot of people like you said you you grew up i feel like no artist is a true artist that hasn't like taken inspiration from somewhere right like everyone always wants to be original but in reality everyone's stealing out here yeah, like yeah, they're always yeah. building off other people so how did you guys you know carve out your own path when you're watching people who are way bigger than you like when you had five thousand followers mm-hmm. two thousand followers and you see people got 100k 200k mm-hmm. How, how, how did you cultivate that mindset where you're like, nah, you know what? It's okay, though. I'm going a, I'm to a keep doing my thing and get to their level. I like this question. Go ahead, this, yeah, I like this question. I like this question. All right, so the thing, so the thing about me is, is I, I really, really enjoy competition. Yeah. I really enjoy it. And sometimes I compete with people when they don't even know I'm competing with them. So when I see someone who's, who's doing really well and they're making a lot of noise, like you say, for me, I just come out and I try to make more noise. I try to be louder. You know, I'm like, okay, I see what they're doing. I love what they're doing. I'm gonna pick apart some of the stuff that they that that they are doing right now. I'm gonna use it, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of my flavor into it. And then I'm gonna come out there. I'm gonna be loud, and I'm just gonna keep making noise, keep making noise until somebody hears me. I need someone to hear me. You know, and um, when you get to that point. Other people will start seeing you. You start getting more views. You start getting more likes. You know, get more engagements. More people start to reach out to you. And that's when you know whatever you're doing is working. Mm. You know, so I, I really, really enjoy that. So um, the whole aspect on just, you know, getting out there and, and just, uh, uh, you know, seeing other people doing better than you. and that drives um, you. And finding inspiration. Yeah, that is my drive. Yeah. Competing with them. That's, that's, uh, that's dope. I like that's that. the alpha mentality <laughs> yeah, that is. a lot that's of people don't so. have, you know, like, yeah, actually contrary, like most people don't have that. I would say a lot of people, they're, they're the opposite. They mm-hmm. see that and they kind of like, you know, get a little intimidated or, but Ed, yeah, the fun part about it though. And you probably experienced this yourself, you know, grow, growing in your uh, social mm-hmm. um, uh, career is the people that you felt like were above you that you would look up to, they start to reach out to you too. Oh dude, that's, right? that's huge. That but, I actually been feeling that. Hey, doesn't a lot that lately. feel good? Yeah. It's like it I does. used to look up to you. Now we're on the same level. Yeah. That feels good. It's crazy. And and that's honestly to build on top of that point too, I just want to mention that's why it's so important though, when you're not at their level yet, quote yeah. unquote, you never, 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 never want to put them on a pedestal because you shoot yourself in the foot. There you go. Like you gotta put yourself at their level before you're even there. Yeah. Because yeah. if you if you take that fanboying route too early they won't respect you when you get to that level like you just gotta you gotta stay in your lane and then when they hear about you they'll hear about you facts but if you just try to like get your weasel your way in there without actually staying in your own lane and do all these things that's when they're gonna be like nah this guy's annoying or this guy's this guy's not this not it like he didn't get it the right way whatever they got all this stuff to say but then when you stay in your own lane and you see them at an event or they DM you or they see a, a reel or an Instagram or YouTube that popped off and it came up on their recommended. Yep. They're like, I remember this guy. I know this guy. He, he didn't yeah. hit me up or nothing, but yeah. I remember yeah, I this yep. guy. Yep. Like, yep. Yo, that's one of the best feelings. That, has, is, that yeah. has happened to me a few times. I'm sure it has to you guys too, but it is one of the best feelings in the world, dude. Absolutely. And that's, that's why I yeah. say when I look at these people, I see it more as a competition. Mm. I, like I'm going out there to compete. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going out yeah. there to compete. I'm going out there to make noise because they're making noise and we got to be louder than them. Mm-hmm. And, and it feels good when, when they hear you. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. I, I would say even to piggyback off what Guru was saying, man, um, when you get into any field or any game, if you're not getting in to be the best, I'm sorry to say this is what I believe, but it's like, what are you doing there? You know, oh, and that's yeah. just the way I think. I'm sorry. That might push some people the wrong way. I know some people aren't like, they don't have that type of mentality. But me, if I'm going to get in the game, I'm trying to figure out how to be the best. Yeah. And that leads me to my point of what I was going to say. Um, you got to study the game. You, ha- you have to, whatever field you're trying to get into, whatever niche, you have to study it. You got to look at the people who are doing the best. You even got to look at the people who are doing the worst. And you got to find a way to get in there and do something that the best isn't doing and do something better than the worst is doing. 
You get what I'm saying? And and find your place. Be consistent in that place. I always say the three C's to, to social media is content, consistency, and collaboration. You got to put out fire content. You got to put it out consistently. And you got to collaborate with others who are doing the same. And um, yeah. that's, that's, that's my mentality, man. How I kind of have stayed. I think that was your original question. How I stayed in the game is um, I don't lose sight or at who is doing the best and I don't lose sight of what I'm doing to put out in, like in my area in my lane like you said staying in my lane I'm in my lane but I'm also looking ahead to see who's up there why are they up there how are they up there what are they doing and then being able to mm-hmm. take what they're doing putting into mine hopefully that can make me go a little bit faster to catch up to them mm-hmm. you know so um, I like that. Yeah, that's a little something. A little, little something. A little something. Dead, <laughs> that's why, that, I mean, Ali, you got a podcast, and I know people be hearing the bombs on there, but like Rashad, we were just talking about before you got here. Like, yeah. Rashad doesn't have a podcast or anything, so nah. people don't get these bombs, you know? Yeah. Like, they, they get like the stories and stuff, and like they'll get his like long captions yeah, and yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that, but they won't hear him like, oh, you know, hey, I'm, 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 I'm working on hey, something. Don't, don't I'm let working on something, man. I know. Don't let him fool you. That man gems. Um, yeah, no, to build on top of that too, one thing that I always recommend to people is like obviously consistency and stuff, but one way I've been able to kind of grow, I think, in my opinion, actually like looking back on it now, I think it's because I literally will reverse engineer what other people are doing really well. So like when I go on YouTube, for example, like I just came out with like a desk video, like a home office tour kind of deal. Right. And so I I wanted that video to do well. I really did. I really want to do well. And so it's been doing pretty decent the past three days. But the reason why I feel like it, it is doing decent is because before I made that video, I did my research. Like I went on YouTube. I looked at the ones that had three million, the one that had two million. I looked at what their videos looked mm-hmm. like. And I made for sure if I ever came out, one, I was like, I got to make sure it can compete with these ones. I got three million, mm-hmm. two million. Because, yeah, because like you said, if, it's, if, you're, if you're not in the if game you, to yeah, compete with yeah, them, then yeah. what are you doing it for? Yeah. Like, right. I'm, I'm not trying to take the third place prize. I'm trying right. to get to the top. So, right. like, if you're not willing to, if, and you got to be honest with yourself. If right. you really can make your work and you're like, you can't be complaining you're not growing. If you're looking at the people who are growing and your work is not there it's yet. Not, if it's not there, there you, you can't complain that you're not growing then. Mm-hmm. But if you i'm um, trust me if you if you make fi- more fire content than the people that you look up to it's only a matter of time it's well, only you, a matter and of you kind of have a leg up on them because you do see them at the top and they at the top this is what they're doing okay well if they're at the top if you can do better than what they're doing while they're at the top then it, like you said it's only a matter of time before people go like okay wait he's doing that but this dude yeah. over here <laughs> is coming you yeah. know what i mean it's like a rookie in the nba like People know that underdog mentality. Yeah, and, like, and I, and I think mm-hmm. we use that to our benefit, right? Right. Some, you have to, because sometimes, mm-hmm. like, actually, like, it's not that fun when you're not in that mindset. You know, when you when you're kind of at the top, that I feel like when you when you feel like you're comfortable when you're at the very top, that's when you should be worried, because yeah, very you, you're waiting for people to, to pass you up now. Yep. yep. Whereas I, I like being kind of like Ali. Like I like. I don't know if I like competition, but but fighting your way up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I like that though. I like that. I like competing with others. I like the underdog mentality, like trying to build off of nothing. Yeah. Cause then, then you could get to the top and be like, Hey, I built this. Yeah. Whereas when you're at the top, you're kind of like waiting for someone to just pass you up basically. Okay. So Ed, Rashad, I'm mm-hmm. going to ask both of you guys this in every single journey, you have the beginning where you come up with an idea and it's like the infatuation stage. You're like, Hey, I just came off this amazing idea. It's going to be fire. Mm-hmm. The middle where you're going through the struggle Mm -hmm. and you know, you're going through some hardship and you know, everything's kind of hitting you Um, or the end where you succeeded, whatever you're trying to achieve, which stage do you think that you are the most happiest? The Look, beginning, ahead, middle, or the end? Yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. Have you asked that question before? Yeah, yeah. That's a good question. All right, you can go first. Go first? I, I, don't, I don't care. Yeah, the ending first. for sure. Why is that? Because when you, if you're someone like me who puts out ideas all the time, you're kind of used to that. You're used to the beginning. All right, let me just put out this idea. Let's see what it does, right? And then you got the middle where you're kind of, and I'm using this in terms of social media, right? So, mm-hmm. TikTok or IG, you probably experienced this. Ad. <laughs> when you put out an idea, like an original idea, and it takes off, bro, and you like, hold on, wait, eighty thousand views? I think like, one fifty, three hundred. You like, yo, this is the one. At the end, it's like, you know what? The ending is the is the inspiration and the motivation to keep putting out the ideas. Got it. For me, okay. that's what the ending is for me. When you see how that video did or that idea did in the end, it's like I can do this with another idea. Okay. The, the, I like the, that. The, the, the beginning is what you already should be doing is putting it out, right? 
getting over that fear. The middle is okay. It could go. It could go really, really good. It could, it, could, it could be like stuff. middle. It could be cool. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I'm, again, I'm using the social media mm-hmm. uh, realm of things. But at the end, when you really see what it did, it's like for me in my mind, I'm like, I have to outdo that. I gotta outdo that video, and I gotta keep coming up with these ideas to do it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Ed, what you think? Mm-hmm. Oh man, it's so interesting. It's like kind of opposite. Yeah, no, it's, it's all good. Yeah, what, what, no, what do you think? Different perspectives. Like, kinda, once again, you got the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where kinda, you came up with yeah. the idea and you're like, "This is fire." Um, my, my, it's hard to answer that question in like one, like I say, I'm happiest in like one section. I would have to say, like, to answer that question, like my chart at least of happiness would go kind of like in a really severe zigzag in that process. So like in the beginning. I'm like fired up. I'm like, yeah. I, I literally, I literally think every idea I have is like a million dollars. Yes, I'm like, I'm yes, like, yo, sir. this is going to be the one that gets me on the <laughs> map. Like yeah. this is going to be the one. So I like, it like, it like spikes up like crazy. And then it has like very bad lows, like low lows where like I'm in it. I'm like, uh, actually it's not that fire or mm-hmm. maybe I should just drop it. Maybe, I, maybe no I should, views, maybe I shouldn't even do the it or whatever. You um, know? and then I, when I decide to do it and get out of that, like that pitfall, it's another like high so, high when I reap the benefits mm-hmm. of it. So it's yeah. like, it's like the zigzag um, of happiness. Um, but I was like the happiest. I would have to say still it, it is like at the end though. Like when you, end? when you see something you strategize mm-hmm. to pay off, the caveat to that though is like it could go the opposite direction very quickly though. Because if you put all that energy and all the effort into it and it doesn't work out, then it's like you're not happy anymore. I think only when it pays off, you're like, yo, like that it's like a feeling that you can never take away from someone. You know, mm-hmm. it's like it, you work for it, you put it in. And that's what I love about social media, to mm-hmm. be honest, um, is that, yeah, you can like build off of people's ideas. You can have it. But at the end of the day, like if you went viral, like you went you viral, went viral. Yeah. like yep. no company paid you a paycheck. Nobody yeah. gave you whatever, like you went viral and yeah, you might've got it from somewhere else. But for the most part, like you, you did something yeah. to go viral and, I think that that's cool about social media because all the credit kind of goes to you versus like in the world, at least in the corporate world, when you work a job, whatever, you could be sitting on top, but there's always going to be someone above you being like, I gave you that. And I hate that about the corporate world because like if you have a boss, if someone owns you or someone pays you a paycheck, no success is truly success in their eyes because they're like, I paid you to do that though. Right. Mm-hmm. right. And right. I hate that. That's why I'm not in the corporate world because I right. just feel like it's, I don't like that. You know, I, I want to make my own. There's success. a ceiling. Yeah. There's yeah. a ceiling. Yeah. And w- what's cool about um, social media is that like there's no ceiling. Like yeah. you could mm-hmm. just. Yeah, it's it hard at times, but when it does pay off, it, it pays it off pays big. Off big. Yeah. It, okay. It, it's, what about you, man? Uh, well, okay. So I like you said, so because I got the answer for y'all. I'm gonna right, right. drop a big a big gem on y'all. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. So you're right. You you do feel extreme happiness at the end when you achieve all of your goals and yeah. everything that you're trying to do. You do achieve that, mm-hmm. and you do feel really really happy. But happiness is created in the struggle. It's in the middle. So you said that middle. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's where it's created. Mm-hmm. You know, you go you go through um, all the struggles, you go through all the bumps in the road, and it's like what you said earlier. Uh, uh, you know, Ed, what you said earlier, tapping into, you know, you don't want to be at the very top. You know, you want to kind of be in the middle, fighting your way up, because that is where you build happiness. You build your story along the struggle, and then when you achieve what you're trying to achieve, you did all of that because you went through the struggle. Now you have a story to tell. Mm. If everything was given to you. If a hundred, like if someone just said, okay, well, you know what, Rashad, let's just start an Instagram account and we'll just give you a hundred thousand followers and we'll give you all the likes that you want. Will you feel as good as you feel now fighting for everything that you did? Hell no. You would not. (laughs) So that's why happiness isn't built at the end. It's in the middle. So fighting for what you want. So it's like what you said, Ed, you know, you want to be in that middle level where you're fighting your way up. That's That's, that's where you feel happy. That's definitely the, the absolute truth. What you just said. But where you where, where you feel it at, I think was kind of the way the question was posed. Is in the end, you feel that happiness in the end. Mm. But when you look back, you realize the happiness it was, was built in, there. Was in the middle. Yeah, yeah that's very, that's, very that's true. Where, like, it was yeah. built. Yeah, that's yep. where it was built. That's you true. Need that. That's where the story comes from. You need that struggle. Yeah, yeah. you need that the, fight. The, the, honestly, the struggle is worth millions. Yeah. The struggles were built. It's it's doesn't have a value to it. You can tell that story. That, 
the the guy that tells the story about uh uh the CEO who pays his employee, he has like a what's that dude's name? I, I don't want to say. He's in Seattle. He's in Seattle. I don't want to say. It's the CEO who um, I don't want to say. But yeah, 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 you know what I'm talking about though. But he tells his story a lot for the last. Seven but his years. story is worth that much. Like he yeah. tells a story of how he's he takes a modest salary, and he play he pays his employees. What he could be, what he could be getting paid, he takes that money and and then basically invests into his people into it into, yeah. into the business, and yeah, we could say like, oh, like oh, the, dude, this dude, he's telling, he's telling that story, blah blah blah, but that story touches someone new every single time. Facts. So that value was in the middle, bro. You gotta, you, you got, got to, to struggle <laughs> if you wanna if you wanna make it in social media or whatever it is that you're doing. You have to struggle. I always say. Fail fast, fail often, and mm. fail forward. Mm. You gotta fail. Keep forward. Failing. Keyword yeah, forward. forward. Fail yeah. forward. So yeah. every time, like when you do something, and you mess up on it. Whether it's a video or it's a picture or, or whatever it is on mm -hmm. social media. Hey, if it didn't go well, learn something from it. Yeah. Don't just don't just go. Oh, okay. Well, that didn't work. I quit. You yeah. know, don't do that. You yeah. know, learn something from it. What didn't go well? Yeah. No, fail that's forward. that's facts though. And honestly, I feel like we can all attest to what I'm about to say right here too, which is that. Like that struggle you face and like what comes out of the struggle, mm -hmm. it might not be that the prettiest. Like yeah, you like yeah, we're, we're learning yeah. at that time, but man, like looking back on those times is like priceless. Yeah. Because oh. for me too, like when I like on my YouTube channel, like I recently hit 10k on YouTube, which I'm pretty stoked Shout about. Shout out to Eddie Lee. 10K, <laughs> bro. That's big. Hey, Honestly, it's, it's, it's small. It's small, but like 10k, it was a big milestone for me because I remember like. I had so many doubts, like, is YouTube even, like, a real thing? Like, yeah. Yeah, whatever, right? And I recently had a video, like, it's crazy. Like, tw like 80% of the results will come from 20% of your efforts. Mm -hmm. Like, not saying that you don't need to try 100%, but usually, like, the 20% of whatever your effort was, like, you'll reap so much from those, like, 20%. Yeah. And that's how, like, for me, I had a desk wire management video. It was tucking the cable. Yeah. I remember, yeah. It was fire. Tucking the cable. We cables. talked about that. Yo, That's crazy. Tucking, tucking the cables. It got like over two hundred thousand views, dog. And, rice. and I'm like, I almost. I was so close to scrapping that video. I'm like, this is dumb. Like, yeah, this is stuff. This is dumb. You like, just, you just put it out. Yeah, and I just put it out there. I was like, yeah. may, maybe it'll help someone. Like, cause you know, like you know me. Like, I'm a, I'm trying to always make cinematic sequences. Course, like, I do course. all this like crazy stuff. So when I was like making a desk wire management video, I posted. It. I was like, whatever. I put it out there literally one of my best performing videos on youtube and that's not just the one thing that's happened there's other things that in my like social media world that mm -hmm. has happened from like similar situations but looking back at like the people like this is what i always tell people too it's like there's a reason why you don't want to blow up on your first video you want to blow up on your hundred and first video yes. because when you blow up on your hundred and first video those are, there's 99 other or 100 other videos people can watch mm. to kind of like yes. commit to you and get to know you. Yes. But if you blow up on the yes. first video, they're nothing. They're yeah. nothing for them to be. So like Who even even person? when I like even when I like some of my videos do well and they'll comment on like videos I made back in like 2018, you know, like 2019. They're like, man, like I can't believe this doesn't have more views. Like this is such a good video. It's like that validation that what you were doing two years ago was not worth, like it's yeah. still worth it now. Like you're reaping the benefits of what you did two years ago. Yep. You just didn't know what it, what impact it was going to have later. Mm. And that's what I tell people too. Is like, if you're trying to do on this social media path, bro, like every post counts. Like you never want to just post to post. Like yeah. you're posting something that could go viral three years later. I love that. You know, I love like that. You, you don't Gems. know, you don't know what might blow up. Like yeah, it bro. could be the post you make tomorrow. It might not blow up now, but it could blow up three years later when, when one video does blow up and it comes back to this post that you made tomorrow. Yeah. So, That's huge, bro. You, yeah. know, you know, you know what people say when they see that video that blows up that hundred and first video. They're like, okay, dang, this is fire. This is hard. This is this is crazy, <laughs> right? Yeah. But, but but who is this guy? Let yeah. me see, let me see who this guy is. They get to know okay, you. Yeah, boom. Okay. This is actually fire. 5K mm -hmm. views. That's it. Oh, subscribe. This dude's fire. Blah, yeah, blah, blah. Exactly. And they start. They, you know what they do? They go tell a friend. They might repost your content. I'm tell, bro. It's it's hard for me to find the words, but man, that feeling. That hundred and first video, when people go back and they like, they start they start saying stuff in the comment section like, "Bro, why didn't this go viral?" Mm -hmm. It's like this is what you do it for. Mm -hmm. It's like I've been telling y'all this is it. Like I'm like I'm putting out fire, but 
you know, so that is the beauty of social media. Is you yeah. don't know. But that's that struggle, you know. That's, that's the, the str- happiness that, that, and the struggle. That, that, that's that middle. But yeah. you, hey, and Ed, you're right though. You know, don't just post the posts too. You know, it. It's funny that video that you made, tucking in the cables. Though it might not have been your favorite video, mm-hmm. when you made it, when you made it, in a sense, you were making you know your least favorite video, but you made sure it was still high quality. You know, you made sure you edited it to be presentable. Yeah. And I think that for a lot of people out there creating content, you can, I mean, you can make anything that you want, but you got to make sure it's quality though. Absolutely. You know, so whatever it is in a way you want to post the post, but at least it, you got to make it quality. Yeah. 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 yeah, know, yeah, it has yeah, to yeah. Be up, up, up to your standards, like this concept or whatever I'm putting out might not be my favorite thing, Yeah. but you know what? I made the content. I did believe in it at some point. It's got to be out. Let me put it out there. But it got to be, you know, yeah. the biggest thing is it got to be quality. Like, yeah. You don't want to post no BS out there. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. You don't like, want to become a robot. And right, just, right, just right. Be, to post to stay relevant. Like, you, you never want to yeah. become like and that. And a lot of people talk about that, too. You know, there are some social media coaches that I've listened to, and I don't know if they're, you know, how well they're doing or whatever it is, but some people say, you know, just post anything. Just make sure you get stuff out there. Yeah. You know, make stay, sure you stay relevant. Stay yeah. relevant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's, it's more than that. You got to put work into it. Social media is a job. It yeah. really is. You got to put work it into it. It definitely becomes a job. If yeah. not for nothing. You got to put work <laughs> into it. Whatever you're putting out there, you got to make sure you're posting to honestly to go viral. At least, you know, for me, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. we're yeah. posting stuff. It's like, okay, well, you know, we, we post stuff because we hope it goes viral. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, definitely. so I try to keep that in mind. No, definitely. And I think that a lot of people, though, they get caught in that rat race of social media, though, mm-hmm. you know, like they see people posting. I, I feel it, too. You know, like when you go oh, on, yeah. it, it's like it's weird. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but like, you know how like Instagram, they do that thing where like they have the date of when you posted it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was, like two days ago, four days ago, mm-hmm. five days ago. And like whenever that starts going up, you're like, I need to get a post out. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That tension starts to build up because yeah. you're like. Man, I've been feeling. absent for five days. Like, yeah, I got to get, get a post out. I get but, that. like, I feel like it's, it's, that's by design, though. Like, mm-hmm. those apps do that on purpose. Well, that's because, very true. Because they want us to feel that tension. They want yes. us to post again on the app yep. mm-hmm. to get the feedback, to feel good, then to close back on the, uh, it's, it's psychological, right? Like, yeah. it, but I mean, obviously, I, I don't want to get too into like the weeds of like the negatives of it because there's so many positive social media as yeah. well, which, which we, let's go into that a little bit. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like, this past year, you guys both have just like kind of going got, got gone ham on social media. You guys have really been pumping out content. And um, I feel like with Ali too, like you, you're a real estate agent, but then you've been like influencing, like in, in, like infusing that fashion oriented content into your, into your thing, which I was telling you, remember we were chatting about it. Like, mm-hmm. I love that because all these agents trying to do the same basic things out posting here, you a know, bunch of houses, posting right? a bunch of houses or posting yeah. a bunch of whatever. So it's cool that you're like doing something different. You're trying to build a personal brand behind it. But on that same note of like grinding this past year of social media, how have you feel like it's it's uh, how do you how do you balance that? You know, like between being an actual real estate agent and then actually yeah. modeling. Right. Uh, how do you like take what you love and like infuse that into like social media? Got it. No, great question. Because a lot of people, they have a hard time doing that because trying to find that you balance. know, they're like, man, like I, I, I do this, but man, I got to post. Hey, I gotta, I gotta Eddie, post. keep it real. I got to make money. Yeah. All right, so how do I get this point across and be be able to feel like this is going to be like a money-making activity versus this is just for social media? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so how, how how have you, like, how was that transition for you, you know? Because mm-hmm. when I met you back when, so, so a little background story. Like, I met Rashad when he had maybe like 7,000 Instagram followers. Something like which that. Which is still pretty good. Not, yeah. not to downplay that. Yeah. Like, a lot of people don't even have 7,000 yet. Right. But now you're at like 130, yeah, something one, like that. 136. Which is, <laughs> I mean, in the span of a year and a half, I mean, that is like substantial. Yeah. Um, so how how have you balanced that transition? Like how yeah. what, what did your life look like at 7,000? And what does your life look like now? Because I feel like there's a discrepancy. Some people, they always yeah. say like, hey, when I hit 50, I'm going to make it. When I hit 10, I'm going to make it. When yeah. I hit 100, mm-hmm. I'm made. But yeah. like that's so not how it's it is. Not. So. Like shed some light on like the actual rea- yeah. like the realistic Are you cool? aspect. You cool if I start on this go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, you okay. Do um at seven K, I did not I was damn near broke. I'll be I'll be so honest with you. At seven K like broke, broke. But that is that is where you need to be and have to be 
and be able to accept that mentally to be able to get to 130 something and be doing okay. You know what I mean? You have to be willing to accept this is what it's going to take. Um, and let me touch on something too. Ali talked about that, that middle point. If you just buy all your followers or you, like you said, if someone just gives you 100K followers, you lose the real value. 100K is where you're not trying to be. 200K is where you're not trying to be. You're trying to be bigger than that. You're trying to be like larger than life. But if you lose the story in the midst of that, the year, I always say blood, sweat, and years. I got that from a YouTuber, Chris Jones. If you lose that, that is where the the real value is. It's not in the number. Yeah, mm. the, It's in the struggle. It's in the story of it. So you got to make it through those years to get to. And I, I always say I, I've been blessed with the gift of gab, but I've also been blessed with vision. I understood that when I got to this point, I was going to have to tell my story. So I couldn't fake it. Mm-hmm. I had to accept it. That's the hardest part. The hardest part is accepting that you ain't got it right now, but you're going to get it. And when you get it, you will be able to give it to someone else. It's hard. Mm. It's really hard. And and anyone out there listening, you got to be willing to accept that. Maybe you do got a bunch of money. Maybe you don't. But what you don't got is where you're trying to get to. So you got to accept what you got and understand that along the way, there's a lot of like lessons and great things to come about to where you get to it. And then you can talk about that or share that with people or help somebody. So... Go ahead. No, I, I like Do you that. think? Hey, I, I like that. Hey, you was, hey, you was, you I was on a level. I can get long winded. Hey, no, no, I, I, I was a little immersed there. Like I almost <laughs> forgot I was hosting I this podcast for a I'm second like, there. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was like, am I still hosting this? Like, uh, I no, the group don't feel pressure. Hey, well, I'm, man. I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna top that one. <laughs> no, no, all right, no. I, I, well, you guys both have your own own story. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, Ali, share some a little bit about your experience with. Cause you recently hit 10 K, which is like, that's a huge deal. I just mm-hmm. made a poster the other day about how people always complain and like 10 K, 10 K, like we haven't made when you hit 10 K like, yeah. and they always feel so discouraged. Like, Oh, I don't got, I don't got the juice like that when I don't got 10 K, which mm-hmm. is like not true. It's not true. So yeah. how, how has that been for you? Cause you've already grown like 2,500 followers since that. And that was like not even yeah. that long ago, like a couple months ago, like two yeah. months ago. Absolutely. So how has that been for you? Like transitioning? Well, you know, I mean, the, I mean, the transition honestly has kind of been the same. Yeah. Um, and you know, going back to, you know, your question, just trying to find the balance is, you know, ultimately you really, you really have to know who you are. You know, because when you come out to social media, you're projecting an image and you need to figure out what image you are projecting. So for me, you know, I, I get a lot of real estate agents that reach out to me. You know, they see this, uh, uh, they, they see this uh, real estate guru, this celebrity real estate agent, and they, they go, okay, well, I love that image. Um, I, I, get, I get the comment, I get the comment, uh, you know, how, how do you do it? I wanna do it just like you. I get that often. You know, and I always say, okay, well, look, you need to figure out what you like to do because obviously your job is your job. Whatever it is, you know, your job is your job. Me, I'm in real estate. Real estate is my job, but who am I? You know, I love fashion. You know, a, a, a fashion is, is, is something that has always been instilled in me. You know, I love to dress nice. I feel weird when I don't dress nice. So when it comes to my social media, I am a fashion influencer who happens to do real estate, you know, and, and if I keep that in mind for myself, then that gives me the ability to be able to post what I post because I'm giving people what's raw. I'm giving people what's really me. This is who I am. This is how I actually dress. I look like this normally. And I also do real estate. Most of my stuff that I do with work or my hustle or my grind, I post a lot of that on my stories because that's my daily activity. Now my daily post is just whatever I want to get out there. So a lot of people out there who are listening, if you're trying to find that balance, you have to really figure out who you are and what do you want people to see. And then from there, you put a little bit of a 60-40. I would say 60% of it should mainly be who you really are. And then 40% is what you want people to see. Um, and that's really how I find my balance, you know, and I got to kind of see that here real quick too, because still to me <clears throat> to this day, while well, Ali, I'm like, bro, you, you got like this mustache that you do. You got like <laughs> this straight, like street style, <laughs> dapper style. 
casual style thing that you put out there to the people and they love it and they want to work with you. But you know what's crazy, bro? But someone up? someone one time, they, actually a few times, a couple different people told me to shave off my mustache. Yeah. And then I was like, that's crazy crazy right i don't even know why would, would i ever do like. that yeah. why would i would you ever even, you got, can you, you gotta look at your, can you even call yourself ali if you if you shave why would i ever do right, that right he's not the guru at that point he's just ali yeah <laughs> like, why would i ever do that yeah the mustache is definitely a staple it's yeah staying. yeah uh, staying. But, I, but i say that to say you look at so many real estate agents and they like suit and tie and they're just cookie cutter. you know you cook, there you go perfect word yeah. cookie cutter and Ali is not that. Yet this man is out here killing the game. So it still blows my mind to this day. And it goes to show that people really do. It's not that they want. They, they don't want authenticity. They appreciate authenticity. But it takes you really being authentic. Because if some people posing to be authentic, there are some people 50% authentic. There are some people 100% authentic. And it's just rare. Yeah, It's yeah, so no, rare. Sure. Yeah. You know, so you really got to. Ali talked about it. You really got to accept and you got to, this is me and this is what I'm trying to do. And I just got to go with it. But people will appreciate that though, Shad. Like 100%. If, if you give them you and you just be genuine mm -hmm. and you just show them who you really are, people appreciate that. Because the thing is, people aren't going to follow your business because of your business. Because the product is the product. But ultimately, the product that you project on social media is you. You are your product. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to press whatever you're trying to sell, you should really be pressing you. But the thing is, Guru, that's hard. It is hard. That's hard when difficult. no one is buying. It's very no difficult. one is no one is picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. It's hard to just keep, yo, yo, believe me, I got it. Yo, believe blah 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 blah. Like like myself coming up, like, yo, Eddie, y'all, this video I got, bro. Like, it's it's fire. Yo, this photographer, yo, this photographer. It is hard to get through the grind. But if you if you really if you really got that desire and that passion and that like something is speaking to you to put this out there, then you got to put it out there because, yeah, because, because not a lot of people have that for an extended period of time to continue to do it. It only pays off for maybe, I guess a certain amount of people, maybe that's how the universe works, but you got to put it out there. You know, you gotta, you gotta put your authentic self out there, but Absolutely. I will say it is hard to do it. And for people to not beat down your door, trying to pick up what you're putting down. It's hard. Absolutely. Yeah. Put it this way, Ed, you, right the videos you put out are fire they've been fire <laughs> since you started and and been I, I, fire yeah, <laughs> even even like i remember even back at nordstrom when we worked at nordstrom you've always believed in social media yeah you know you, you've always believed that you can you know you knew the uh the algorithm or the secret sauce <laughs> to social media you you've always believed that yeah. you know and and a lot of people in seattle though at the time they may not have believed in you you knew you was putting out fire so you know you staying yourself and being yourself and still staying genuine you know and being the person that you are a lot of people they don't just look at you as a videographer because there's tons of videographers out here but there's only one eddie lee <laughs> you know what i mean that's very yeah. true. there's only one yeah, eddie yeah. Lee. that is very it's true. like dude like i might like yes. i might like there's a bunch of videographers and you yeah. can work with a bunch of them and you know what they may make the same video and it may can't come out exactly the same but the thing is eddie comes up with a different energy you know, he's fun to be around. I like following him. I like following his journey. Yeah. He drops some some videos and some of them are hilarious. He does the the 30 day tips. So it's you being you yeah. that makes you different. It's, it's, it's two things I want to piggyback on that. The first thing is the 30 day tips. I feel like you should do that like three times a year, bro. Like <laughs> it's so good, man. And it's so high quality. And, I, and, and I'm doing the 365 days of outfits. It is not consistent. It is sometimes trash, but I'm trying to stick with it so I can kind of get my niche. But to do the 30 date, bro, is hard. And you yeah. do Shot. it so well. Shot. Bro. And you know the crazy thing? What's a lot that? of videographers out there, they will they will never do that. They will because never they do They want it. to keep the secrets for themselves. Yeah. 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 With Ed, he gives it to him. Ed gives out his gems. Yeah. He just gives it out. He just says, okay, well, you know what? This is what I know. I'm just going to give it out. Right. You know, but but that's because that's the person that you are. Absolutely. No, that's facts. And that's because I feel like I feel like if you really want to truly be successful in the mm -hmm. world, it, just like successful in anything. Like, I, I feel like when you are withholding, you'll never truly reach your full potential. Like the only when you give all of you, can you reap all the benefits. Right. 
Like people think that they can like hold, withhold secrets, but thing is like, ain't nobody got all the answers. Nah. There's someone <laughs> out there that also got the same juice as you. Like, yeah. and I think it's more of an ego thing. Like for me, like I don't ever think I have all the answers, mm -hmm. but for me, it's like if I can give you the answers, like like you said, like I I believe in that too. Which is like there's a lot of videographers out in Seattle. There's a lot of videographers in LA. A lot of videographers in New York. Whatever, right? There's a lot of creators out there, but like I never feel like threatened or like i'm i'm too small in the space because like i'm i'm doing me for me yeah like mm -hmm. yeah. yeah like my skills i always i preach it too like you cannot live or die by your craft like mm -hmm. just because i'm good at video that's not going to take me all the way to the moon like mm -hmm. just because i'm good at video yeah i got more i i need to provide something more than that i, mm -hmm. I gotta be something above just what i'm good at. just like actors right you could be a good actor mm -hmm. but the real standout actors they do much more than just acting mm -hmm. right acting is good but they do much more than that they're yeah. like philanthropists they're like they're people who are like dropping I mean, gems all the time. Will Smith. Will Smith is mentors. one of one of both yeah, of our Yeah, they're men they're yeah. mentors. Like Absolutely. they're more than just what they're good at yeah. because the thing is like the people who hold their craft too ho close to their heart, yeah. that's the people that get burned mm. because they realize one day they're like man, there's people out there doing the same thing as me, yeah. but I'm the best. You like I should be getting more. all the best. It's like, nah, like there's so many people out there doing the same thing as you. Yeah. What mm -hmm. separates you? How do you stand out? Is you like, yeah. so, yeah. Be, so yourself. To be yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so. but, and that, and that, that goes to my second thing too, is like, there's only one Peter McKinnon. Yeah, exactly. There's only one Alex Costa. Like we can go on for days, but that I would say that is like one of the ultimate goals of social media. Someone may disagree. But how how do you get to a point where almost everything you put out is fire? Yeah. But to get to that point, you got to have that one fire video and you have to follow up that with, a, with another video and another video and another to people be like, yo, everything this dude puts out or this woman puts out is like it, it deserves to be heard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is where we're, that's where we're trying to get to. Yeah. You know, as a real estate agent, like, you know. I don't want to have to prove myself anymore at this certain time. I want people to come to me and be like, you know, guru, I've seen what you've done. I've heard what you've done. I want to work with you because mm -hmm. your track history. That's ultimately what we're working for is like our work speaks for us. You know exactly. what I mean? That that journey, that middle that we put out there, that speaks for us. And what we hope one day is that gives us the opportunity to just to just be able to make that living from that and be able to to give that to people on an everyday basis. And we continue to keep that going. Absolutely, you know I what like I mean. That. Yeah, I like. That. I really do think that's what it is. That's what so, I mean. I mean listen, on is. social media, if every video I put out can get a million views, great. But I gotta get there. Yeah, I gotta have that one video hit ten million, mm -hmm. and then a video before that hit maybe eight million or five million. Yeah. Now every video I'm doing is hitting one million because I didn't I didn't did that one video yeah. to hit ten million. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you you have to put that craft out there. You 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 gotta you just. Everything we've been talking about, authenticity. Yeah. But it's hard to do that on an everyday basis when people don't see it. But mm -hmm. you got to see what people don't see to mm -hmm. be able to make them see. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. y'all don't see what I'm doing right now, but trust me. <laughs> you get what I'm hey, saying? Hey, trust me. Gotta stay tuned, you just got to hey, yeah, 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 stay yeah, tuned. Yeah. Look, I, 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 like, I like the being genuine, being authentic. I love that. You know, I would also say, like, for social media, mm -hmm. if you want to grow in social media... Not only do you have to be authentic, but you have to figure out a way how you are going to give value. And that goes back to 30 tips, 30 days. Yeah. Figuring out how you're going to give value to your audience. You know, you have to figure out something. It's like you're either teaching someone something, you're giving someone some sort of entertainment, or you are um, you're giving someone some, something about you. Yeah. You're letting something learn something mm. about you. You know, uh, from what I find on social media, at least for my audience, um, I find that the posts that do the most successful for me is going to be either um, big achievements like milestones that gets a lot of engagements or uh, something super entertaining. Like I, I did something like uh, yeah. when I did the shoot for HGTV, that yeah, one yeah, got yeah. a mm -hmm. lot of looks. Yeah, that got a lot of love. Um, yeah. Or uh, it's something emotional like someone died or like a, a shot yeah. with me, my girlfriend. Those ones get like so many engagements. Yeah. I remember so, you talking about this too. Like, I think it was on your story. Yeah. You mentioned this before. Yeah. So I get that a lot. And what I realized is that you're giving people value. You're either teaching someone something or you're letting something, someone learn something about you. Mm -hmm. And they, they tend to enjoy that. So along with authenticity, you got to make sure that whatever you're giving out, you're giving them something. Yeah. And that's big. That'd be big for, for, for social media uh, creators out there. Absolutely. It's the 
biggest thing, dude. Value. Be, yeah. Providing that value, you know, it's just like, don't, don't be, uh, don't be stingy with the value because you're just going to pass. People will just Absolutely. pass you up. You can't be stingy. That's like, hard too, though. I'm telling you guys, yeah. it, it is very difficult. You know, you get into the social media game. It is very, um, it's based on like perspective and perception, but you got to give it to the people and let them take it and do with it as they will. Yeah. You have to be willing to give. I always say social media. The first word is social. So be social and media is what you put out there. Mm -hmm. Put them both together and you got something. Mm. You know what I mean? So, Hey, what about this? <clears throat> what about this? What's the next big wave? Cause everyone's looking for it. <laughs> Clubhouse. <laughs> Club, you think no, Clubhouse, bro? <laughs> I, man, I hate mm -mm. to say it, but I'm gonna say it right now though, but I kind of hate Clubhouse. Well, I don't really like Clubhouse. I got the app. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. I feel that. I, feel I that. Really like Clubhouse. I just, no, no. no. I, I disagree with club at, but I, I, go ahead. I, I, I think, I don't think it's the new wave. I, I don't like clubhouse, not because of clubhouse. I just don't like that. There's another platform for out. it. Yeah. I just feel like there's so many platforms. You yeah. Know? Like everyone's yeah. like, we already are so disconnected as a society. Like we don't need another, like I, I've been, even me, like I follow some people on clubhouse now. I'm not really on it as much cause I'm mm -hmm. trying to figure, still figure it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But some people be spending time oh my on God. that app. The whole day, the whole day. That, like they be spending hours. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, yo, like not, <laughs> TikTok was already time sucking all right, of us. Right, right, right. Yeah. But now to be on like an audio format. And, and one thing, one thing I like kind of controversial, like I don't like about clubhouse is like, I feel like this, the, Everyone trying to be a coach now. Yeah. Everyone trying to be preachy now. Yeah. Like everyone trying to take a position. Your 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 uh, your moderators in the room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like everyone everyone wants to be a somebody now. Yeah. And Clubhouse has created the most low barrier of entry to mm -hmm. be a somebody. Ain't yeah. that because, something? Because I you, did not think of that. Because you don't you don't have big. to create a single piece of content. You could mm -hmm. just hop on. Yeah. And start talking. Unmute yourself and start dropping whatever perspective yeah, you yeah, got yeah, yeah. at least like on tiktok it's like yeah people can say like oh whatever tiktok is like is like low quality but, but you got to be validated you still got to create yeah, something yeah though. you, gotta you be still got to be creative mm -hmm. you still got to create something with your phone mm -hmm. like instagram tiktok facebook twitter you i guess twitter's a little bit different but like instagram and uh tiktok yeah you still got to create to like have a voice mm -hmm. right like to have a seat at the table right but now with clubhouse you could you could you could be nobody and technically have a seat at the table which is kind of creating this whole like uh this self-help community kind of like empowering community but people who haven't really built anything yet and mm -hmm. it's creating these people like it's, it's validating them when i don't i think it's too prematurely validating right. people mm -hmm. and i think that can be very very dangerous because yeah instagram and tiktok and all these have there's there's algorithms for a reason right we don't, they don't, you don't have a million followers on Instagram for no reason. Right. You don't have a million followers on TikTok for no reason. You did something right. Mm -hmm. But with Clubhouse, it's like creating this environment where people are like, oh, you're telling me I don't got to post a single photo. I don't got to post a single video. I don't got to do nothing. I just hop on and drop bombs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, I do agree. But like, that's why podcasting is there. If you exactly. really, if you really exactly. feel like you can drop bombs, go start a podcast and build it the right way. Don't be like chiming in, in and out on like rooms. But with all that being said, mm -hmm. I do feel the pressure of another platform coming up, though. Really? Right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people, they're still saying, like, are you on Clubhouse? Are you going to make Clubhouse? Like, it's the same thing with TikTok when TikTok first yeah, came out. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. All, we all were so focused on growing the gram. Yeah. And then it was like, are you on TikTok? We're like, nah, nah. Yeah. And eventually you're like, all right, we on TikTok yeah, too now. TikTok. Hey, you catch us on yeah. TikTok. So it's like, I just feel like there's just so many platforms now that... I'm trying to figure out where, where does the where is the line drawn? I'm a, I'm a jump in here. Yeah, go I'm for I'm gonna it. say in 2021, what's the what's the like the next up and coming platform? Yeah. Blah blah blah. It's the platform that you choose. Mm. And mm. I know that's a little cliche, and I'm not giving like a crazy answer, but just focus on one of those platforms. No, Facebook. Hey, shout, hey, shout out here giving the people's answer. No, I'm just. I'm I want to hear shout answer. No, 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 no. Whoa, whoa. Answer. Okay, all right. So it's, that's two part. Yeah, let me hear shout answer. My, my answer would be IG Reels. Okay, it would be Reels yeah, because that's the answer I want to hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't be giving For, me the people's yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna give you both. All it's right. IG Reels, but also there, there to to um Eddie's point, there is so many platforms that you can. Be like boom, 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 boom. No, if you really want to grow and take off, you need to focus on one. Yeah. You can't spread. You can't do a podcast, 
and have a Facebook live page and have a TikTok and have this. Where do you have time to like kind of build, unless you got 24 hours in a day to just do just that. Yeah, where do yeah. you have time to get your roots dug in? Yeah. That you got to pick one. And then from there, you got to pick the best one based on your audience. So like for me, IG is my best. Mm -hmm. TikTok is cool and like these other platforms is cool, but IG is my 100% best. That's That's where I got to put my, what'd you say? I think you said uh, 60, 40. Mm -hmm. I got to put my 60 in IG Mm -hmm. or 70 in IG and then the rest just kind of 80. I I, 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 I'm going to hop in on there too. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And just say that I think personally, like I still think maybe because I I create videos, but I think Still to this day, the most valuable platform you can have audience on is still YouTube, mm. because mm. you. I think personally, because YouTube, it's a different type of audience. Because you build a, a million subscribers on YouTube, and and people are are sitting at their computer, sitting on their phone, watching yeah. you for five, six, ten minutes long. Mm-hmm. That is valuable, right? You can get you can get quick follows on TikTok, you can get quick follows on IG, but like, how many times are those people actually checking back on your stuff? Like. Mm. Yeah. It might be like a decent amount, but like YouTube, like it, it, I've met some YouTubers now who have like really done it and like really made a few, full yeah, career yeah, out of yeah, it. Yeah. And like, trust me, it's a, it's a different ball game. Like, yeah. yeah, because like if you could choose right now, if I, if I asked you both, like if you could have 1 million on any platform, what would it be? Instagram. Oh. You oh, think so? Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, Damn. absolutely. I, I would choose YouTube. A hundred percent. I say YouTube. Is, yeah, I say no. YouTube. Why Instagram and, and, though? And see, well, well, we all create different content. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm six two. I have, I'm attract, uh, quote unquote attractive, <laughs> quote unquote attractive. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> I make fashion content. Blah blah blah. I'm gonna choose Instagram because that takes me to acting, TV, photography. Um, it, the content I make, a lot of brand deals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. Modeling companies like Instagram. I see that. I, I, Instagram is still pictured for like beautiful people yeah, yeah you get what i'm saying like, like, like the portfolio you like get a resume kind any of. any woman that is ig model she's ig model you know any guy that's ig model is like his most aesthetically pleasing you know yeah, um, yeah pictures or whatever so that's why i personally would choose that because i think i fit into that category mm-hmm. right if i was just giving information blah 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 i was just trying to provide people with something and it had nothing to do with a 15 second video or a picture I'm choosing Instagram. I mean, um, YouTube. I'm sorry. I'm choosing YouTube. Yeah. Hey, YouTube's big. Yeah. You know, no, YouTube's that's huge. That's interesting. The thing is, thing is, too, like, YouTube is hard to grow on. It's I hard, ain't going to yeah. lie. But that the thing is in. hard to grow yeah. on. Yeah. Because it's not like you can just subscribe to someone, they're going to subscribe back. Mm-hmm. Or it's not like you can just like someone's sure, video sure, and they're going to like sure. back. Like, they're not going like to do it's that. Like a, you're like a lone soldier, kind of. Like, you got to wait for people to come to you. You got You got to have the Eddie Lee type of passion. You got to really be in this thing for that. Hey, when Eddie said he hit 10K... <laughs> oh bro i was ready to take a shot oh like oh <laughs> dang i don't know how he did that I was, hey our podcast is still fighting on their way up we still trying to get monetized oh, i'm like man. damn i don't know how he did that but no that's what i'm saying like back to what you were saying there's the people's answer and then there's the my answer is the um, ig reels yeah it's, it's the reels right but at the same time it's the what, ig reels what, don't don't stray away no, from no, that no it's no the but IG no reels. but at the same time right my ig reels might do better than your tiktok videos your TikTok videos might do better than my IG Reels. So you do also have to look at what content you're putting out, what's your demographic, and then be able to decipher but between. Sean, you believe in the IG Reels. Because that's for me. But that's what I'm saying. That's what that's the question is, what do you believe in? What's the what's the next big thing? No, I I got that, but I also want to give people the real also, <laughs> right? Because right. I don't want people to be like, oh, just hop on IG Reels. Hey. There's you, some people who I follow on Instagram who should 100% be on TikTok and they're not and it pisses me off. And I want to DM right. them and be like, bro, you or sis, you need to get on TikTok. Like your content is that type of an audience. The Instagram audience is a different demographic, bro. You got Gen Z mm-hmm. versus millennials. You know what I'm saying? Gen Z wants something completely different than what the millennials want. And Gen Z is more TikTok, millennials is more IG real. So me personally, I think that's next up because that's what I'm putting out there. And I think that's what's gonna really 
really be the next thing because now you got millennials who aren't on TikTok who are seeing these reels they're on Instagram and that's what they want to see. Thank you. So right. That's all right, I wanted right, to hear. Right, 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 that's right, all right, I right. Hear. No, and that's all I'm, I wanted I'm, to hear. I'm with you on that. I just wanted to hear that. But at the same time, I'm also a content creator. And I gotta give people if you're gonna create content, I don't want you wasting your time. If you're 19, 20, 21, 22, maybe your your ideology is different and you you need to be on TikTok. Nah, reels ain't for you. Reels is for me. But it might blow up. Look, this what this this what this what I think. I think that IG Reels is the next big thing Mm -hmm. as well as TikTok. Yeah. Because Instagram is going to have to compete with TikTok. Right. TikTok is big, right? You can you can post Yourself one video cereal. you can one eat video cereal. <laughs> eat cereal on tiktok yeah. and blow up <laughs> you know and on ig reels ig is trying to push that yeah so it might not blow up but instagram is gonna help you absolutely yeah, definitely absolutely. they're gonna help you blow up yeah. as long as you use it yeah i see and, and i'll leave off with this i saw one video on tiktok that had like I think it was 700,000 likes, maybe like 10 million plays or views or whatever. That same video on IG, it had a different caption and it only had like, I think it only had like 800,000, 900,000 like plays and mm-hmm. like, I don't know, 100,000 likes. So it just tells you right there, there's different audiences who want to see this content. Hold on. Put oh, it out hey, on both. Rewind. Hold on. You said 800,000, 900,000? Yeah, um, like, like, like. That's plays. a lot. Well, that's no, a, don't, don't downplay that. That's a but, lot. But on TikTok, it had eight. <laughs> Million, but eight hundred thousand, no shot. No, that, no, that's, that's a that, lot. That, that's still a million. That, that, that's still a lot, bro. But what I'm saying <laughs> is, where do you want to divert your attention? Would you Would you rather go with the million? No, or the you're thousand, down, bro. You're downplaying eight hundred, nine hundred thousand. I'm not. I'm Come not on, downplaying dog. it. I'm just on saying, Instagram. I'm, only thing I'm saying is, there's a difference in audiences, and and if you're a person who's putting out your energy, where is your time best suited? You got to You got to look at okay. What I can what, see that. Yeah, like what? Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. It, it, I, I mean, yeah, I, and that's I, I, the political answer. Is put it out on both. I, I think, see where I it goes. I'm, I'm gonna okay. hop in there real quick, and I'm gonna just say, think, I'm gonna just say that I, I kind of, I agree with both of you guys in the sense, like, I guess the people's answer is yeah, be on IG Reels, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I think, I think what Rashad is saying is. You got to create the platform on the platform that you think you can create the best quality content, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, like for me, like I was just telling you guys before the podcast copped on, like my brain don't really work in stories. Like it, it just, it just doesn't yeah. work in that format, in that yeah. framework. Like my brain works in like B roll, A roll, cinematic sequence intros. Like, so that's why YouTube is my choice of platform. Like I want to start growing there because mm-hmm. that's just how my brain works. Yeah. But for some people, like like that that like that work off that quick you know that like that engaging entertainment like tiktok or reels is where it needs to be like yeah. that's you got to choose a platform that feels comfortable i think when you force it when you try to make on a platform that you you don't feel comfortable with or like you're totally out of your element you might if you're forcing it, it might work but it's going to be a lot harder to make yeah. it work because Absolutely. you're kind of like going really against the grain across. you're kind of yeah. going Absolutely. you're going against the current because you're already at a disadvantage because this is not where you thrive. It's like it's like yeah. it's like in TikTok, you can't take that same YouTube video that will no, blow up heck and no. break it down into two different part one, part two, part three, part no. four on yeah. TikTok. It's not no, happening. you gotta find a way on TikTok to put the right trendy music to it, exactly. to put the right caption and get it out there. You know what I mean? I think but in you, YouTube absolutely. you can put it out in ten minutes and it blows crazy. I, I think I think if you really the goat you could really make platform. You could you could like you could like repurpose hey, the same bro, content that, on all hey, platforms. Platform, platform. That's but, what we want. But that's that's, that's, that's difficult really though. But because yeah. because you know you be making like a YouTube video. Like you yeah. go on a shoot and you're like, how do I make this a reel? How do I make this an IG in feed post? Yep. How do I make this also a YouTube video? Oh, man. And then can we actually wrap this into a story? Who like, is right. doing that? That's hey. the goat. Hey, but hey, there are people the out goat. there that do that though. <laughs> and, okay, let me ask you this. And, uh, let me ask you this. Is, how do you do that? So you got. You got LinkedIn, you got Facebook, you got Instagram, yeah. you got Twitter, you got TikTok, now you got Clubhouse. Now, if you are Snapchat. a content creator and Snapchat, <laughs> okay, so you got seven different platforms or seven of the top platforms yeah, yeah, out yeah, there, right? For sure. Now, if you got seven different platforms out there and you're a content creator, how do you figure out how to balance your content out there? Obviously, you want to be active every single day. You got seven different platforms mm-hmm. that you're working on. How do you balance that? I, I, think, I think that it's, it's, uh, I think it's possible. 
But I think the only way you can do that is one pre-planning. You you have to plan out your content. Mm-hmm. You can't be a running gun content creator, like stories in the moment content. Like you really got to think about your content and mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. when you're posting and what you're posting. But the second part of that is you got to group them together. Like you can't think about like all seven individual platforms, like mm-hmm. which pair together. So for me, it's like real like reels and tiktok like they kind of go together like Mm -hmm. you could probably post what you post on reels on tiktok as well like like pair that together right like youtube and ig like in feed posts you can you can kind of like do that together like you Mm -hmm. post a youtube video kind of repurpose to do a teaser on instagram in feed posts like you pair them like clubhouse and a podcast like you do a Mm -hmm. podcast you probably carry all those same topics over into clubhouse Mm -hmm. like you gotta pair it yeah if you're the goat you pair all all seven but I think you can, if you want to be on multi-platform, you kind of have to think about how do you pair them together, though? Like, how do you bundle one piece of content? I, I think it's impossible what? to to make one piece of content and go, and to go on, on all yeah, seven, though. No, yeah, I'm, you can't. I think you can. Can I you jump in so? on that? I think right, you go can. I'm going to say you got to take the Gary Vee approach and you got to have a team. You got to have a team that you can work with that can... You know, you a lot time here, a lot. Hey, bro, you got this. You got that for TikTok. You know what they want. Cool. IG Reels, you got that. Boom. I got to jump on Clubhouse because it got to be me. I'm mm-hmm. going to jump on Clubhouse. Bro, you got to edit on the YouTube. You know how I like it. Cool. Boom. Snapchat. All right, I can do Snapchats. I can I can do my quick stories. When I, blah, blah. I think you got to have a team that can help you because you only get 24 hours and you got to sleep. You know, mm-hmm. you, true, only, true. you only you only can deal with so much not getting the right amount of sleep per night. Like I think, I think you got to have at least a couple people rocking with you that can mm-hmm. help you edit this. How can you edit a YouTube video and get it onto the other six major platform? I don't even think we talked about Facebook. Mm-hmm. How can we get it on Facebook too? So you got to get to a point where you can outsource basically. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I think that you can figure out all the platforms. I Like I personally, I think that you can. But you just need by to, yourself. I mean, it'd be hard. It, you need a lot of time. <laughs> you need a lot of time. If you do it by yourself. Yeah. Hey, hey, you baby. Be a trust hey, baby, baby. I know he's supposed to Netflix and chill tonight, but I gotta, <laughs> get, I gotta get this. You know, I gotta IG make real. a clubhouse. <laughs> See, look, I gotta make a real. I gotta make a TikTok. We got all platforms. Right, right, right. See, look, now, busy now, out here. now, like we said earlier, social yeah. media is a full time job. It is. It is. Now, the thing is, with all the different platforms, I think that you can figure out a way how to be big on all platforms. Mm-hmm. As long as you recognize who your audience there is, you there you go. like we said earlier, yeah, yeah, there you TikTok go. is Gen Z. Yes, sir. It is. Yeah. Facts, it yeah, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Uh, Instagram, it's millennials. Yeah. Big facts, yeah. that is, right? Yeah. Facebook, then you got some old people on there. My aunt, ba- baby my boomers. Gr- I just found out the other day, my grandma. Yeah. Clubhouse, too. They got my some grandma Clubhouse, got yes, Facebook. For sure. Clubhouse got some old people, got all kinds of people. I don't know yeah. who's like on older, older, like twenties, thirties, forties. Yeah, Snapchat, Gen Pe- Z, Gen Z yeah. millennials, Gen, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, so as long as you recognize what people like in like Twitter too. I, who, who's on Twitter oh, these days, man? Twitter, all kinds man. of people everybody on Twitter. On Twitter. <laughs> I think every, I think Twitter is like that. That like that. Everyone it's like on that Twitter, but no one really talks about Twitter, but. Everyone's on Twitter. Yeah, 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 but look, yeah. see, as long as you recognize who your audience is and you figure out ways how to to structure your content or project your content onto those different platforms, I feel like you can take one idea and you can manipulate it so that way it fits into these different yeah. platforms. It just sounds hard. Google. I, I think you it could, sounds hard, just, but it's not that, that hard though. Sounds, you just got to recognize it. I think you could take a topic and, and make it applicable to all seven. I don't think you could take one piece of content, though. Like, can you dilute one YouTube video into all seven platforms, though? Or put our or, 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 possibly. Or not, hold on. I love that you picked the YouTube video because yeah. YouTube videos, I feel like you can. Now, you take a YouTube video, right? Hold let's that. just say you put like a solid, like, okay, let's go with the, with the tuck in the wire. <laughs> tuck in the wire. It's already big on YouTube, yeah. right? Tuck in the wire, make a small clip of it, put it on Instagram. It's probably going to blow up on Instagram. Yeah. Same thing with Reels, right? Make it like a 15-second clip, and it'll probably get like a, a trillion yeah. views, right? Yeah. Now, for uh, uh, for uh, House Party, House Club? Clubhouse. 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 <laughs> All right. Now, now for Clubhouse. Ali, Ali ain't feeling it, bro. <laughs> he said All House right. Party. All right. Now, for Clubhouse. <laughs> Now for Clubhouse, <laughs> it's all audio, so it's a little bit difficult. Yeah. But what you can do is you can start a, a group called um, uh, Office Essentials, and then topic is how to tuck your wires. Sure. Where do you I'm find it from? So far. See now, yeah, now, yeah. now it's rolling, right? Yeah, yeah. And then on uh, and then on uh, uh, Twitter, yeah. Take a couple snapshots, maybe like four shots. Put it up and then put a link. 
to mm. maybe to your YouTube channel and should be like how to check your wires. Mm. That may or may not blow up. Yeah. I don't know. TikTok, yeah. I haven't yeah. figured out the algorithm. There, but it's on there. But it's yeah, on yeah, there. Yeah, I feel it, yeah. And then on Facebook, Facebook also has that Facebook watch. Mm. Just like YouTube. That may also blow up on there as well. So you can figure out a way how to yeah. do it. You just have to you just have to recognize who your audience is. It's just is. so much energy. It's so it I'm is. kind of with is. Rashad on that. Like yeah. I think if you want to get to that point though, yeah, you, you really a need a team though. You, you, like, you, you, you got to have a squad. You, you need one guy, two guys, or or one girl, two girls, or a combination, three, four of them. You need a little team who is helping you see yeah. that see that vision yeah. from the perspective of that social media community. For sure, for sure. Because I, I could see myself making like a YouTube video and an Instagram post yeah. and then handing that off to a team and be like, yo, turn this into like a into real a TikTok, TikTok clubhouse yeah. topic. Like, and then I'll hop and in. They, and they might be like, Eddie, I just need a voiceover. Yeah. You know what yep. I'm saying? And okay, I can provide that. Or like, you know, Eddie, can you get on Clubhouse for at least 15 minutes? About yeah. like, you get what I'm I saying? I can see that happening. Yeah, but like one person doing it, Oof, I, I think you can. I need to meet that I think person. It's possible, but Absol- it's absolutely possible. I think that you need a lot of but time. But that though. person, they they you gotta strap up your boots. Yeah, get yeah. ready. You to you work. in it for the grind. Yes, though. sir. Like you work in mm-hmm. sixteen hour days. Yes, sir, or yes, ma'am, or yeah. both. You know. But again, I think definitely. I think that that definitely takes a team. All right, I think uh, so. We we went on a little bit of like a a tangent there. I think on like social media, but mm-hmm. there was some knowledge. I think a lot of people can take away, especially the people who are trying to figure out like what platform to exert their energy on, mm-hmm. because like we talked about, there's so many platforms now. There's Clubhouse, there's Instagram, there's TikTok. Like literally, it's tiring to even list them all because there's so many now. But I think that you can build on any platform. Mm-hmm. I think you so you just gotta choose one. You got to choose where your strengths are. You know, if you're not that visual, Clubhouse might be for you. If you're not that long form, then maybe TikTok or Reels. But if you are long form, you like to talk from the camera and be about that, YouTube. maybe YouTube's for you. So, mm-hmm. yeah, choose your strengths and then and then go from there. I think that's like the period. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, I, I, picked, my, I, I, I picked my poison two and a half years ago when I made my first post. The missed little post, it was on Instagram. Mm. And right now I have, I think, 2,500 YouTube subscribers. I have... Almost 30,000 TikTok um, followers. Uh, I don't know about Clubhouse, but it's still Instagram is my brand and butter. And that's yeah. what I chose. I, I, I picked my poison. So um, I would say you do have to choose. It's like it's like a starter Pokemon and Pokemon blue or red. Like you yeah. got it. You can't you can't have all three. You can get all three later, you gotta one but you got to pick Bulbasaur, Charmander or Squirtle. Yeah. You know, so you got you got to pick. And you gotta go, that was and you poetic, gotta, and, and you gotta, you gotta understand that when you go down that path, you gotta accept what comes with it, and you can get the others as they come along, but you gotta choose something where you can dig your roots in and just grow. You gotta grow that tree. Yeah. Go ahead, Guru. I was see, no, I was just gonna say, um, I forgot what I was gonna say. You good, bro? <laughs> yeah, well, what, 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 what we talking about? You know, picking a platform and. Um, you know, what, what, how, like, what's the best way to go about it? How do you choose where you're going? Yeah. Um, Instagram is what, your choice, right? Right now. No, right? I knew what we was talking about. I just forgot what you I was going to say. say. Okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, Instagram is big though. Inst- Instagram is big. I, I would say for me, it's give me Instagram and, and Facebook. Facebook's really big too. Yeah. Um, and just recognizing, you know, what's a post. Um, you know, what's interesting, Guru, I hate to cut you off. What's, in- what's interesting about what you just said is that, if someone was to give you a million something, you would choose YouTube. YouTube. But for you, it's Facebook and this, Instagram. But this Isn't is that why. That's crazy. This is why, though. Yeah. Because I realize that I genuinely just like entertaining. I got you. I've I've said this time and time. And now, I might not tell a lot of clients this, but if I wasn't in real estate, where I would see myself is entertaining. Like, I would see myself all, like on, on a reality TV show. Because mm-hmm. that's where I feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. I just feel comfortable being in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. Honestly, when the camera's rolling, I feel happy. Yeah. It's weird. That's dope. You know? Yeah. That, hey, but you got to, you got to like manifest that into that's something. So dope. Bro. You got to, you yeah, got to like, that's dope. That's you got to like do something with that dog. Like, see, yeah. now, for real. Now, now, now I won't, man, you know, I won't. <laughs> tell any secrets yet but i mean luckily I, I do got you know a few connections some with pillars some, lined up yeah, some, yeah. Some, some stuff lined up so hopefully you know uh god willing you know things might will see go you my on way. tv mm-hmm. yeah but you know that's why i said youtube yeah but what i want to know is, is like i want to make sure that the listeners out here are really getting some strong value and mm. getting some real gems out here mm. now sitting here in the room with you guys you know, obviously all of us have something that works for us. Now, 
I want to ask you on Instagram, we all feel like we do pretty well. And then there are other social platforms that also do really well as well. Um, if you were to give some advice to people out there with Instagram, how to make it work, how long should they have their video? Um, when they post, does carousels work better than single posts? Um, what would that one advice be? That's or actually, I that's actually a really good, uh, I think that I can tap into my last question there Please. with that together because yeah. I think it goes actually closer. That, that my last question was, if you could give your younger version of yourself one piece of advice, we could we can make it social or we can make it just like general too. Mm -hmm. Like, what would it be? You know, like if you could give your younger version, like a younger Ali, younger Rashad, if you could go back in time and be like, yo, do this on social differently or do this in your career or business differently. Like, what would that, what would that one you can only choose one. What would that one piece of advice be? Mm. Yeah. I, for me, I would definitely say like um, IGTVs is, was almost trash. I would say like definitely <laughs> yeah. go to YouTube. You know, like stop trash. focusing. Trash. Yeah, I would say stop focusing on the IGTVs. <laughs> I still focus on it now, but it's only because I already started. And, you know, I'm um, dead. but I would say the biggest thing for me is, is focus more on carousels. I would like okay. focus on carousels. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. So that's on the social front. Um you could build off that, but also answer on the personal stuff. So social uh -huh. media and then also like just in, in business in general. So okay. Like two, so, two part. Okay. So, so I would say in business in general, I would, um, you know, it, that's tough, Ed, because the advice that I would give myself is something that I'm already doing now. And fortunately mm -hmm. it's, it's what I'm doing now and it's just doubling down on social media, you know, um, advice I would have given myself when I was younger is to double down on social media, focus on social media, but that's what I do now. I focus on social media. I double down on social media and I know that social media is something that works for me. But and that's what you would have told your younger self to do more aggressively. Yeah. Yeah. I probably would have just said, just do it more aggressive. Yeah. 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 You know, like go harder on it. Go harder. Yeah. yeah. I probably would have just said that. I feel that. That two part question, both what you asked about doing Instagram really well and, and advice against your younger self. Actually, my answer answers both of those is your story your story your story your story do more stories tell more of your story make more story highlights and just that is what people i think really want to see man stories i really man like that's where all my connections are made the from my stories i swear what? i swear before Wait, are you talking about stories like ig oh stories? ig stories yeah okay. i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry, sorry. yeah ig stories IG i thought stories, you yes. meant like literal stories no yeah. no no, no. Yeah. I, I, I apologize <laughs> ig stories for both yeah, yeah, for my younger yeah, self for sure, for i would have sure. done more stories because i repost my old stuff a lot like yeah. i repost yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of memories and one year ago True. Two those years are ago. motivational oh my for sure gosh, bro yeah. i make so many connections through that and then two um about how to how to uh work instagram better or like um your your question about just the platform you're on instagram stories man story highlights those stories get archived you can repost them later and just filling people into your everyday life and like what you do I, I created a course where i said like don't don't make your story slides to where they're more than like 10 or 12 slides but man, I, I'm almost, I'm almost like, I probably will go back Dang on that now and just, and just say, bro, just post, man, because people that are interested will watch all of facts. it. Yeah. That's facts though. That. And, and yeah. that, big. that little 50 people, a hundred people, that number keeps growing to everyone for starts sure, to tune sure. into what you do every day. Yeah. So it's I would big. say I would say your stories. Stories is big. Yeah, I like stories. That means you gotta have a story though. Social media, uh, underline social, like you, be social, man. Child, do you be watching people's stories though? Oh yeah, I be watching people's stories. You I watch tune, stories? I tune in, man. I want to see what they're doing, and and I do that because I do want to connect with my audience. I, uh, I am a, that's like, good I of you though. Big, I'm an big influencer, big key, bro. big key. Make and sure you connect yes, with the people. Big yes. key. First big word, key. social. I am yeah, yeah, I social. I want to see what you're doing. I want to talk about it. I don't care if I have. 200,000, 150, 300, 500,000. I want to, the people who I follow, I'm obviously invested into those people's lives. I haven't unfollowed them yet. So I, like I want to see what you guys are doing. And before we finish this off too, before we finish this yeah. off, I, I, I want to make sure that we live, leave something big for the listeners out there. And I want each one of us to drop just like one little tip out there for the social media creators out there. Yeah, definitely. So before we finish, all right. So I just want to keep that in mind. 
Mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. all right. You want to drop that now? I don't know. Yeah, well, we could, we could, yeah, we could end with that. I could start. I think that. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, start. I think that uh, we talked about a lot in this podcast. We talked about like literally like cultivating confidence, yeah. mm-hmm. social media, finding your niche, whatever, niche, niche, whatever. Just give them something that um, you do that, that works. My one thing is, is like, I think that the Chase Jarvis, he's actually based out of Seattle. He's like a creative. One thing that I would have told my younger self or like what I would encourage people is like we get caught up in the numbers like heavy. Like a lot of people trying to hit that 10K, that 100K, that one mil. But you know, you know, a lot of people don't think about this. Like what you really need is a concept that Chase Jarvis come, talks about, which is 1,000 true fans. That's all you need. That's mm-hmm. all you need to be a millionaire. You need 1,000 people, like a cult like following that people will get behind you. Just only 1,000. And they with you. And they with you. Oh, They'll yeah, ride with you. They'll buy any product that you sell. 1,000. 1,000. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. 1,000, you can be a millionaire. And so I think when you I think when you think about that, you you kind of drown out all that pressure of like numbers, like I 10K, 100K. I'm trying to get to a million. I'm trying to get to a million views, 100K views, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like you don't need all that, bro. Yeah. Like we all trying to be successful Facts. and all you need is 1,000 true, true fans. You know, even 1,000, even if 1,000 people just paid you $5, yo, a cup of coffee a day, a cup of coffee, bro. Yeah. 1,000 people, that's $5,000 a month. That's 5k a month. You could you could you could be a you could be a full time you could be a full time creator yeah, with 5000 a month, enough, mm-hmm. right? That's For a cup enough. of coffee from 1000 people, yeah. right? So you don't need 10k, you don't need 100k, you don't need a million. You need 1000 true fans. Ed. So, that's loyalty my is royalty. <laughs> Loyalty is loyalty. See, That's I knew fire. you was my friend for a reason. Back toys. <laughs> I knew you was my friend for a reason Back because toys. we believe in the yeah. same thing. Yeah. Now, Go ahead, Guru. My give, tip, give that, yeah, give that my tip. tip. My tip is really just to make sure that you engage. Mm-hmm. If people comment on your comment, respond back. Yeah, you know, for sure. Respond back, especially if it's like people within your local area because those are the potential people who yeah. will be that 1,000. You know, you need to create those supporters, those people who are going to believe in you, who are going to support you, who are going to comment on everything that you post. Exactly. So if they comment on your stuff or if they support your stuff or they share your stuff or they like your stuff or whatever it is, if they engage with you, you need to make sure that they hear that you are responding back to them. Because if you don't, eventually what's going to happen is they're just going to feel like, oh, well, you know, I'm I'm commenting and I'm liking they don't see me, so it don't really matter. Yeah. But if you comment back, if you respond back, oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. I put a lot of hard work into this. Then they're going to see that you see them. And now the next time that they, they see your post, they're going to comment again. Yeah. Not because they like it, but they might like it, but also because they know that, oh, this person sees me. Mm. Yeah. That's how you create yes. that 1,000. Dude, and I want to build yes, off that too because I don't have that many followers, but sometimes I'll be getting people hitting me in the DMs, right? And mm-hmm. they'll send some long message. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't, I feel like it's my duty yeah. to <laughs> give them a long message <laughs> That's back. Facts. Back. Facts. Facts. Me too. To, Facts. To, to, to give them a long message back. I feel like, and when I don't, I'm like, yeah. I feel like you I just, just cheated them. Facts. And so like when they, when they send me a long message, I give them back. And sometimes they'll sometimes even say like, dang like thank you so much for taking the time to message back i'm like yep. dog why would i not you right. just took time out of your day i don't care how many followers you exactly. got right. you just took 10 minutes out of your day to write me that message i'm gonna give you 10 minutes of my time to write you exactly. back a message exactly. but exactly. that's the people who like but then on the flip side of that though people who like don't even think about it they'll send me a message for like 10 seconds and be like yo let's collab i'm like i'm gonna swerve you yeah. like I, you don't even care about you just trying to get off whatever i have right mm-hmm. but people who are really trying to be there for you like the thousand true fans yeah. like i'm i'm here to like help you i'm here for the thousand true fans 100%. like i'm not here for the 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 hundred hundred k you know that won't even like bat an eye towards what i have to say right so yeah, yeah just that is just a that's little big, yeah. bro. but yeah what, Rashad, what, what, what's what's your lot la- what's Man, your little takeaway <laughs> I love that though. I love that though, for real. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually gonna leave off on something more geared towards like fashion and appearance, but it's the three F's: face, fashion, and fragrance. Mm. Take care of your face, mind your fashion, and invest in your fragrance. 
Dang, that's, that's what like I would say. High key poetic. Yeah, how, how are you about to wrap that into like a bro. a more life well, to- well, uh, man like a dropped life topic. three C's and he dropped the three F's. I'm waiting for the three A B's and three A B's and C's, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm the letter man. Oh, oh you know man. what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Uh, your face is the first thing that people see. You know, your your fashion is your perception, and your fragrance is how people remember you. I think I, mm. I want to say I don't know if it's, it's fact, but like the olfactory, like the five senses smell is the is the thing that people like associate with remembering the most. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah for you know, sure. in their brain. So, um, mm. yeah, man, if you can look good, if you can look good twice, like you dress good and, and you smell good, man. Dude. And then you drop it knowledge, you getting into their brain, man. Come on, man. That's on, what man. I love about <laughs> Rashad, though, and I'm sure you can attest to this. And that's how I know he's going to be successful because Rashad, Thanks. like off platform, like off Instagram, off Instagram, people who listen to this, you obviously you guys got to go follow these boys, but off the platform, mm-hmm. he really be like that in real life. <laughs> yeah. Like he really be thinking about his, his how he smells, how he yeah. looks, how he talks. You know, and then that, that shows up in his in his yeah. work. Yeah. And that's how you know he's going to go far. Yeah, he's very Cause, conscious. Because, cause, cause like, you'll meet people on the social media yeah. space that, like, they don't... Yeah, they'll talk They'll talk it on social media. Mm-hmm. But then in real life, they're, Off like, camera. they're, they're, they're like, whatever. They're, not, yeah. they're just doing it for the likes. They're just yeah. doing it for the engagement, you know? And that's how I know when you're actually about it, when you say you're about it, and then you actually are about it off the platform. That's what you are in real life. Those are the real successful yeah. people. I feel well, like well, those and, are the people and, that really going to make and, it. Um, Gary Vee says it the best. He said, you got to look at, like, um, recording your life and, like, oh, I got to get this footage and blah, blah, blah. He said you have to look at it as, like, documenting your life. Yeah. So if you really live your life the way you document it, there, there's no discrepancy in authenticity. Mm-hmm. You're just putting it on camera now. You know, that's almost like that saying doing right when no one is looking. They used to say that in the military all the time. But, yeah, yeah. Um, that's what I got for people. Um, thanks, Eddie Lee. Appreciate it. Yeah. Bro, I had a blast, man. I had a girl. Yo, this was a fire. I, I, I know I have fun. Hey, yeah. this was a time. this was a fire conversation. <laughs> like I honestly I like this exceed I knew it was gonna be fire. Yeah. But like exceeded my expectations though, because for real, you guys came in with, with some bombs for real. For sure. So I know if you if you guys are still listening up until this point. Uh, you a real one because it's a long episode, but I hopefully you guys took some value away from this from this fire episode. So I will end it with this. Where can people go find you guys? Because I'm sure people up until this point, if they're still listening. Yeah, they're probably curious about what you guys do and what you guys are about. So you guys got to go follow these fellas on social media. So Rashad, where can they find you and, and go first, and then yeah, Ali, yeah, where yeah, we can find you. Ellie, that's on Instagram. That's on Sorry, YouTube. Sorry, do that one more time. The mic was a little bit low. Oh, Go one more it. time. Um, yeah, follow me uh, on all platforms at Mr. Little M R R L I T T L E. That is on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Clubhouse, uh, Twitter. Even though I'm not on Twitter anymore, etc., cetera, <laughs> etc. Cetera. Um, I'm just on my grind like everyone else, and I'm just putting out my story for sure. Um, that I I encourage other people to do the same. So follow me on all those platforms, and I look. I look forward to having you join my community. Awesome, awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, uh, for myself, uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram and uh, majority of most social platforms at Ali the Guru. That's A L I the Guru. Uh, we also have a uh, mind if I shout out my podcast. Yes, okay, yes, okay. yeah. Ali has a podcast. Yes, definitely shout it out. Check out, check out our podcast. It's gonna be topic of discussion. We are on uh, YouTube uh, as well as Spotify and all major uh, podcast platforms. And um, yeah, hopefully you guys check us out. <laughs> yeah, and he has like he has some high profile guests that come on that Jeez, show, dude. Yeah, like Seahawks do. players, <laughs> man. NFL that, man. players, doctors. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> he got some real ones on that one. So if you want some like advice from some real successful Police officers. people, at man. topic of discussion. Yes, yeah. go check, check it out. out. And I'll link. Make sure to link. I'll link their Instagrams in the description. So make sure to go check that out because obviously I know there's only a couple hundred of you guys listening to this each episode. But hey, like we talked about, it could be a couple thousand at one point. It so we never know be. when it'll blow up. So who knows who will be listening to this in a couple months or in a couple years. So anyway, I really appreciate you boys coming on the podcast, dropping some bombs. Mm-hmm. Make sure you guys go follow these guys and hopefully you took something away because that's that's the whole point of this co- podcast, mid-convo. Like somewhere in the middle yeah. of the conversation, you take something away. So. Uh-huh. 
improve your business improve your life and that's what we're all about so i enjoyed it yeah thank you Ed. thank, thank you guys for having us peace appreciate it peace